Okay, so today I'm going to tell you how to take some scrap iron, a couple of U-joints, a half-inch variable speed drive drill, a Turbo 350 flex plate, and an import bead roller, and turn it, you know, it's comparable to a four or $5,000 bead roller. All right, let me show you. Okay, so, you know, all of, I, I don't know about you, but I want to pay for a cheap bead roller, but I want it to do, uh, I want it to do what an expensive one does. So I'm going to quickly go over the, the normal mods that people do to upgrade this thing. All right, the first one is if you are by yourself and you're running one of these bead rollers with a hand crank, the electric drive, that's not a uh, luxury, that's a necessity. So there's a half inch drill and the flex plate and it, it works pretty good. It's pretty, it's pretty reliable. I've used it quite a bit and uh, it works pretty well. The next thing is reinforcement. When this thing comes out of the, comes out of the box, it's pretty, pretty wiggly. So reinforcement for the length of the bar, top and bottom. I've got the bottom reinforcement on the other side. I'll show you in a minute. And then something to try to resist the upward movement. Now, this, for the metal I'm going to use on this thing, 18 gauge or less, I, this seems to be good enough. If you want to test it a little bit more, you can put some box tubing on it, and you can really go to town on reinforcing this thing. But for me, this seems to work pretty good. The other thing, you know, the other common mod is put a spring on this thing, so when you loosen this up on the factory roller, um, the shaft doesn't come up, so they put a return spring so it comes up. I prefer a little more direct contact, so that's the rod out of a C-clamp, and basically I've got it mounted using a little C-clip, if you will, so that when you turn it up, it pulls that top shaft up. Seems to work pretty well. All right, let's get to the, let's get to the interesting stuff. Alright, so if you saw the last video, you saw I made this lower shaft extendable. Now, I did a couple of things in that video. First off, I redrilled the holes for these back bearing blocks and I moved them an inch and a quarter forward. That put the shafts an inch and a quarter forward further out. And for me, that keep, gets the dies out in the open and lets me get a better line of sight uh, and allows me a little more a little more flexibility right in terms of moving that shaft that bottom shaft moving opens the door to opens the door to the possibilities of what kind of dies you can do you can you know you can have custom dies that now can go that far uh, my preference on this is uh, stack dies and while they're not as robust as, you know, uh, the expensive dies, I don't think these are hardened. They're, they're not mild steel, but they're not, they're not extremely tough steel. They drill pretty easy. But I'm thinking the stacked washer, washer idea works pretty well. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work on that. So the bottom shaft slides. Gives you a lot of flexibility. And I'll show you, I'll show you a little bit of what this thing could do in a little bit. The other one is I put a U-joint on this top shaft. Now, I don't know that uh, any of the other ones have this type of setup. As far as I know, they all have a solid shaft and they tilt up. I really never liked that, right? The way you operate is if you're going to take the material out, you know, you basically loosen this bearing block bolt up, you screw it up, take the material out, you readjust it, change whatever you need, put it back in, screw it back down, and tighten that back up. Yeah, I never did that. That's a pain. So, I really wanted to fix these two, I wanted to fix that bearing lock. One, it would, it would, I could set the gear mesh back there, and two, if you don't tighten it up, this hole in this frame is oversized. And if you leave it loose, this top shaft has a tendency to kind of just move around. Um, 
Yeah, it's a pain. Now, I drilled the new holes. And I decided, you know, smarter than the average bear here, I decided I was going to make them holes the right size for that bolt. Well, then I discovered that the manufacturer it wasn't real precise in terms of how they made these blocks. So the truth is you really need that excess tolerance in them holes. <laughs> so in the end, it worked out even better that these are fixed, right? That U-joint now allows me to, I can now raise this up and down without having any impact on the mesh of this back gear or any of this section here, right? This just operates, basically I broke the, I broke the, the inter interdependence between the gear mesh and this front, you know, the, the front block or the shaft. So let me show you some of the stuff I played with, with I've, I've mixed and matched. Let me show you the dies. All right, so I've got a pile of bead roller dies here and I played with them and make it, having that bottom set adjustable, I don't know if you can see that. So I've got a long slope on this side and a short slope on this side. And I did that with the same set of dies. I didn't change dies on that. You can kind of see playing with other dies. Kind of made a, and again, that one's hard to see, but there's just a little bit of a joggle right there and a bead. This one. Right, there's a, a bead there. This is the low point. You can kind of see it on this side. And then a long, a long step on this side. So, same kind of thing there. This one, this one, one isn't really special if you look at it from this end, right? That looks like the bed floor of a pickup. But there's actually a slight joggle right there. So if you view it from that, so if you view it from this side, right, you could make custom beads and just some more stuff. That is not special. How about this one? All right. So let's look at. That's the low spot, a long upslope. That's a flat spot that's higher than that one, a short upslope, and a flat spot. Now that bead looks interesting. And again, I did that without changing dies, just having that lower shaft adjustable. So I'm going to run one through here for you. So on this one, I'm gonna set the I'm gonna set the step short, right, for the first one. I'm going to move it out and make it a little longer.
I can see a lot of possibilities here. Now, why do I think this is uh, as good as a $4,000, $5,000 bead roller? Well, like I was telling you, that JS, that JS uh, I think it's custom, right? It's sold by Trick Tools. It has a 24 inch throat. Now remember I moved this out an inch and a quarter, so this actually has 18, has 19 and a quarter. And the reality of it is, given that the shafts were split, if you want a 24, if you want a 24 inch, basically you can stick them out and you know weld on a little bit more. But I I thought the 20 inch one, 19 and a quarter inches was enough for me. Now let's measure. That bead is at 19 and a quarter, so. Anyway, so it doesn't have 24 inch, uh, but that's good enough. The JS has a expanding or contracting upper shaft, right? We've got the same thing, except it's on the lower shaft. I can't tell you that, uh, I can't tell you that it's gonna make any difference whatsoever. Right, got three quarters of an inch movement this way, three quarters of an inch movement that way. Got the same, you know, upper shaft adjuster. That's, that's the same type of system they have. It's electric power, and uh, I suspect it's a lot cheaper to replace, right? Getting a, go find a, uh, another half inch drill. I don't know about you, but uh, that one's probably 35 years old. That was, that was, you know, something my dad had. Um, and that's pretty much it. If you buy the deluxe one, apparently it can, it can tilt 35 degrees to help you do something. I'm not sure what that is. I'm not an expert bead roller, but uh, as near as I can tell, this has all of the design features that the JS bead roller has. Now, and I think it's going to do... I think it's going to do the job. I definitely am going to uh, do the stacked washer, you know, start building a washer set so that I can stack up washers and build, you know, if I've got custom profi profile dies that I want, um, I think that would be handy. And I'm going to put a table on it, right? Put a table on it. And I, I think a fence would be handy, but in my mind, those are pretty straightforward. The trick was designing the movable shaft, and while it may not seem necessary, I really like these. I like that rear gear to be fixed. Right? There's no movement in it. This thing, this upper shaft, there's no slop in it. It, it, it is where it's at. Um, and on the other one, you know, if you forget to loosen it up, this upper shaft moves. Not a lot, but uh, I have, I've had it cause me, cause me an issue. Well, I hope you found this interesting. I know there's thousands of bead roller uh, videos out there, but I thought this one was a little unique, and uh, I think it's going to work pretty well. I appreciate you watching. Um, if you got questions or anything, you know, leave, leave it in the comments. Um, and until next time, I'm Random at Random Rod Shop, and I'm out of here.